There isn't one of us who doesn't enjoy a good donut now and then. Question is, did they have donuts 300 years ago? Did they enjoy the wonderful round goodness with sprinkles? It's hard to imagine that they did. So let's dig in and see if we can find out just what they had that we could call a donut. Now, when I start to think about this, I think confectionery, sweetness, that sounds expensive. Maybe if they had donuts, that was something that rich people would enjoy. But if we go digging into the books, especially right there in the 18th century, we find William Ellis's book that's all about taking care of the farm, the simple farm in England in 1750. They had a lot of farm workers, people that were working hard in the field, and he talks about feeding those farmers. And we find out that they do have something almost exactly like a donut. In fact, several different things. There's a family of food traditions in England and in fact all over Europe and maybe all over the world. They would call them something like fritters or maybe even just cakes. The word donut doesn't appear at all. If we go digging, donut kind of combined as a word doesn't really show up until about 1805, 1804, something like that. We do see it show up in a dictionary in 1806 and it says a small roundish cake. In fact, classically, what we call a donut hole is more what the true definition of a donut would be. A dough, and a nut shaped, and we can even see food sometimes related to that. If we look earlier, we find gingerbread, and they called them sometimes ginger nuts because they would make them into a walnut-sized piece. The 17th and 18th century French cookbooks have recipes for beignets, just like we know them, and these were popular for religious holidays. And religious holidays are like street carnivals and, and fairs of the time period. They are frequented by everyone, all the common folks, and they are enjoying donuts. 200 years ago, there was more than one way to get to something like a donut, even if that's not what they necessarily called it. They would make a fritter, and there are lots of different fritter recipes. Fritter recipes usually have some kind of fruit in them. And yeah, sometimes today we put fruit in our donuts, right? Fritters are really close to a donut, except the dough is very loose. It's a batter, and we pour a batter into the hot oil, and it makes our fritter. And a donut, usually, that's a very soft dough, something that we can cut into a shape, like a donut hole shape. So it doesn't seem to matter whether our donut ends up like a little donut hole or a big funnel cake. It's basically the same thing. And there are so many different recipes in our time period for just exactly that. The first recipe I want to do is for fritters. And this recipe comes from William Ellis's Country Housewife Family Companion in 1750. The Hertfordshire Plain Fritter. To make these, our housewife makes use of six eggs well beaten and mixed with two quarts of milk, a quart of flour, a good store of powdered ginger, because ginger makes the fritters hollow and hot. She also mixes some coarse sugar with her batter, by which these need little or no sugar afterwards to eat them with. Batter fries hollower in fritters than in pancakes, but then it employs more time and fat in dressing them. This recipe is so simple, there are very few ingredients. Let's start mixing our eggs with our milk. We're gonna whisk up our eggs first, and then as soon as they're whisked up, we're gonna mix up our milk. And remember, I'm only gonna make a quarter of this batch because it makes a lot of batter. So we're gonna mix up these eggs with the milk, and as soon as those are mixed up, I'm gonna mix up the dry ingredients separately. So we've got our flour, we've got our ginger, which is gonna make that wonderful spicy flavor, and then some sugar. Once we have our wet ingredients done and our dry ingredients, now we can combine those together and whisk it until it's got a little bit of air in it. Once our batter is finished, we can pour it into our hot lard to cook these up. The first time we see the term donut in American literature is in 1809 when Washington Irving writes about a dinner and it's got all these rich foods and it's covered with donuts. And that he describes is almost exactly what we're talking about here. He refers to it, of course, connected with the German ancestry of that area. And they're called something like Olikoken in the German. 
Our fritters turned out great. We put them in that hot oil and when they start to float and turn a nice light brown, they're ready to come out. The next recipe comes out of the same book and it gets a lot closer to donuts. This one's called How to Make These Hertfordshire Cakes nuts or pin cushions as it says. These are much used in Hertfordshire for giving farmers servants a changeable dinner now and then to their satisfaction. For if they are made as they should be, the men are generally fond of them. We take skimmed milk and hog's lard and warm them by the fire. Then some flour, sugar, yeast, an egg or two, and the powder of Jamaica spice. We make these into a paste as if for a pie crust. We roll it out to the thinness of one quarter of an inch and cut it into two inch squares. Then we boil them in hog's lard in a little kettle or a stew pan or frying pan. First thing we need to do is get our milk warming and then we can melt the lard into that. We don't want it to be hot. We just want it to be liquefied. This is a classic 18th century recipe in that there are no amounts given. We just have to fake our way to it. We know that we get to a consistency of something like a pie crust or a very soft dough so that we can cut it into our shapes. So our only real measurement are the eggs. We're gonna be just working with two eggs. I'll take our liquid ingredients and mix them all together along with our yeast. That's a liquid ingredient from the time period. And then add in our flour until we get to that consistency that we're looking for. It's fascinating as we read into William Ellis that these aren't necessarily for breakfast or even necessarily as a snack, but they might be dinner. They might be the main course of dinner. And obviously they had a different idea of dinner than we do today. So donuts don't always show up as a sugary treat or some kind of snack. No, they also show up as a garnish, sometimes a savory garnish in dishes like peas, or spinach, or even one with an open face fish pie. Several of these recipes push these donuts up one more notch by adding a pudding sauce and then sprinkling sugar on them. And a classic pudding sauce here is one third wine, one third butter, and one third sugar. We have two versions of the working man's donut. The fritter here, and obviously it doesn't look anything like a donut today, but even today in a donut shop, you can buy a fritter. And this fritter, you know, there's a lot of ginger in here and ginger is a working man's spice. This is one of the least expensive spices and the biggest pop of flavor. So this is gonna have a lot of gingery flavor and should be great. It's got that great elephant ear texture. We didn't even have to bother to sprinkle sugar on this. There's enough in the dough to give us the sweetness and a great ginger pop on these. The recipe says that it brings hollowness to this and also heat. And that ginger is a kind of a hot spice and it, it really does a great job in here. Now the one that's closest to the classic donut. These are what we would call donut holes and Boy, they've got a lot of wonderful um, sauce over the top of these and the sugar in this should be great. And the spice in this is allspice. They call it Jamaica pepper in the time frame, but that's a classic allspice. And again, a very inexpensive spice. So classic working man's donut. Allspice in here is treated like the poor man's nutmeg. It is used quite often and let's find out how it works out in this. Mm. Well, pudding sauce over the top. We've got some nice airy pockets with this. The yeast had enough time to really build up. Once it hits that hot oil, it really starts to puff up. These worked out great. Texture compared to a modern donut, actually a little more dense, but very flavorful. You're gonna love these.